Salams, this is News Click and you're watching Leslie Xavier and myself, your playthings this afternoon, a very dreary afternoon, a drab afternoon in India's capital, New Delhi. Uh, we're talking about the, uh, a week full of action on the sporting front and looking ahead to more uh, that's happening in India in terms of sport on the field as well as off the field. First up, the biggest story of the week from uh, many points of view was Virat Kohli stepping down as India's test cricket captain. Uh, Leslie, just before the news of uh, Virat stepping down, you published a piece on News Click uh, talking about, I guess, the idea of a test captain and, and certain bits of behaviour that didn't perhaps go down too well uh, in the day's play prior to his resignation. Yeah, this, uh, the incident that is in question, it, it sort of uh, uh, left the, I mean, as usual, any incident related to anything these days, it left the Twitter verse, social media verse in splits. Plus, uh, even, even the cricketing world, I'm talking about ex-players, experts, everybody was unsure which stands, what is, what is right, what is wrong, that kind of a thing. But for me, the, the incident was a pretty clear cut one, straightforward one. So, uh, if I can uh, narrate the incident again, so it's it's uh, day four, uh, test balance, uh, test is in 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 a critical balance, South Africa chasing uh, for a victory, and their captain is uh, judged LBW uh, in the in the final session of play, and Dean Elgar, and uh, he reviews it. And in the review, it's shown that Ashwin was the bowler. And in the review, it show, it's shown that the bounce is higher. So he has been deemed not out. The on-field umpire was himself surprised. But I guess the software, Hawkeye, that uses the software, uh, the algorithms decided that the bounce of the pitch is higher. So the ball is likely to go up. And of course, the Indian team, I mean, it was a big moment. Indian team was disappointed. And Virat Kohli expressed his displeasure by going to the mic Stump Mike and among many things saying that, uh, I mean, expressing his anger at the broadcaster uh, and saying that they should play fair. So basically hinting that Hawkeye is fixed. A very wrong thing to say because he's, he's not he's not an overnight skipper that way. Yes, I mean, we, when, we, when we talk about this now, right, we are talking about the end of Virat Kohli era in Indian cricket. He has been a skipper for that long. And he, mm. so, uh, <laughs> when I first saw that incident, I was just thinking, Ki, when will this guy grow up? And it seems that he's stuck in his teenage years to start with. And the larger uh, thing is that the resignation happened, but, but the discussion is not on the right uh, things. Because the resignation happened soon after this incident. India lost the series. India lost the match. India lost the series. And then soon Virat Kohli resigned. And uh, BCCI was silent when the incident happened. Of course, it's, it is a dis diplomatic incident as well, because the way I look at it, when a, when a test nation tours a country, it is considered a, 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 the, the bunch of players are considered ambassadors of the country to another country. It's a bilateral series we are talking about. And the skipper is the, is the head of that, uh, if, you, if I can call it dip uh, uh, entourage, a diplomatic entourage event. So, uh, you are expected to behave in a certain way. You can't allege that the country, the whole of country against us, Levin. That was, in fact, said by KL Rahul, not Virat Kohli. And Ashwin himself also said, said some things. Uh, so uh, the larger thing here is that Virat Kohli, known for such acts, has set so much of an example that his players also think that they can say whatever they want and they are they are unafraid because they think that they can get away with it. Uh, if it was 10 years back, 15 years back, this would have attracted the attention of ICC's disciplinary panel and some action would have taken. But for some reason, uh, no uh, progression of things happened in that direction. BCCI was silent. I don't know whether behind the scenes some, some discussions happened and that is what <coughs> led to Virat Kohli's resignation. That's not clear yet. But... Uh, if that happened, well and good, because BCCI is at least showing some signs that they, they are keen on uh, the discipline of the team. 
but hmm. the way if if it has happened they should be out in the open they should also portray it as a as a as a chance to portray the board's stance as far as player and discipline of the team and uh, the stance of the team is concerned regarding and it it is a clear matter of uh, within the game itself it's not something outside 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 the cricket field as such so the that incident for me is 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 uh, is critical here when we look at virat kohli's stint as a captain i know people would say that uh, we are harsh in judging him for one incident uh, like we would not judge uh, zinedine zidane for the ed but right but then circumstances are always different as well because uh, we can't equate these two so uh, that in, this incident is, is indicative of many such incidents that has happened through virat kohli's uh, uh, captaincy and uh, uh, we have always been uh critical about his his style of captaincy his stances his his approach to certain things the way the certain things that he has spoken uh because the general feeling was that he is setting a wrong precedent for for the members of the team as well and also not just that he is also setting a wrong precedent for youngsters out there who are looking up to him to uh, for uh, as a as a role model and uh, it is very clear and uh, there is no two ways to it that uh, two ways to it that uh, virat kohli is as a role model as far as behavior is concerned is not exactly something that we would want youngsters to emulate so uh, the piece in itself was criticizing virat kohli as well as the bcci for how they are handling that situation when it happened and uh, it it also looked at certain past incidents and a certain form of players and how they react to similar similar situations when it happened including how saurav gangli himself had reacted certain times so it's within the game that such disappointments happen so uh, yeah if it was within the right of the team team management then they should they could have lodged their protest uh, instead of that doing such antics i mean it's i mean it's uncalled for and for me that highlights what virat kohli stood for as keeper of indian team and also where the indian team is right now uh, mm. under his leadership so in context lazy if we can take the conversation uh, to a bit more of a forward looking place now that kohli's time as captain has kind of come to an end uh, and there's a new coach as well in in the form of rahul dravid uh who's looking to build something for i guess the next 10 years or or more in terms of at least the test side let's say uh maybe there was a time it can be argued i think many people will argue that that kind of aggression uh whether it's sourav ganguly or mahindra singh dhoni or virat kohli the the kind of uh, aggression and uh, that kind of attitude that they brought to the playing field to the cricket pitch that shaped india's uh, i guess progression from a country that also played cricket as, as one of uh, england's former colonies and all of that to a country that has now come to dominate world cricket in many ways but how do you see things proceeding from here on now that we have clearly th- this is one industry or one sector in which india's uh, a sort of control over how things work on a global scale uh, cannot be argued against when we look at aggression that's a wrong thing again because we look at aggression and we look at fist pumping even give um, speaking ex- expletives as as a sign of aggression as a sign of indian team being being on the front foot all the time they're chasing the match they're chasing victory etc etc but that's not that's not the case let's just be very clear on field aggression what it is there is a law, i mean uh, there are laws which govern any sport for that matter and there are things that you are not supposed to say so for instance in a playing field in any other game if you if you give a uh, swear word if you if you uh, shout out an expletive you might be expelled from the match it's not happening in cricket uh, i mean strange laws that that govern the govern the game in itself sledging is is considered part of the game so there is a fine line it's a very very subjective uh, uh, thing when you okay. when you judge if if the if the player has crossed the line as far as sledging is concerned we know the monkey gate famous monkey gate incident in this in this regard so 
if you look at the transformation you are talking about the mindset of a colony playing cricket to uh, a country who was chasing victory then that transformation happened in the previous generation uh, it it started to happen around the time uh, saurav gangli was skipper and then with the with the with the current ones uh, slowly the transformation happened during virat kohli era the, the, <clears throat> when he took over he was just uh, imposing his personality onto the team team dynamics he as a leader was always uh, outspoken uh, expressive uh, be it displeasure be it victory or i mean in the sense that even 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 the way he celebrates victory it it, it exuded uh, Uh, not just i mean we can we can interpret it as confidence but it was not just confidence it was also brashness it was also also that kind so that that kind of a cultural behavioral impact it 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 it's uh, slowly permeated into the team uh, as such because as a skipper and also as a skipper who has had a long stint at the helm he had the chance to mold the team the way he wants i, I mean mm. and pick the players that he wanted Mm. so that building process has happened and the team is where it is now but when we measure whether that aggression that we so celebrate because that's the only point that everybody is talking about as far as virat kohli's legacy is concerned that he he made fighters out of the team the team was always uh, always fighters let's not forget that india won the last odi world cup under a under another skipper a skipper who would never betray his, his what is working inside him he will never betray his emotions what well, mm. does that doesn't mean that there was no aggression in the team team setup there was no drive to push for that victory there was no fighting mm. spirit right and so uh when we measure virat kohli's victories yeah we had a lot of overseas test victories and all but we didn't win the world test championship we lost in the when, when the stakes were high we lost that that is that has been a hallmark of virat kohli's uh, skipper that the team was uh, and i personally believe that the team was so bogged down by this uh, by this constant pressure from within also where the skipper is so hyper uh, aggressive that they themselves uh, i mean feel that push from the side that we need to be we couldn't hold it together that. yeah yeah so that uh, probably that's why we used to for uh, in icc major icc world championships we used to falter at the at the knockouts at 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 semi final stages So when the knock when or even the final so uh the team is as we as we reached a threshold a point where beyond that virat kohli is not the answer for the future because there need to be a fresh fresh outlook now because this clearly is not winning us trophies and being mm. the topmost country in the world in cricket you just can't let uh, a skipper remain because you are having good uh bilateral series victories most of it played at home or oh, even have a away victories also but when 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 major tournaments happen the team loses and that uh, that is also one of the reasons why uh i mean virat kohli's captaincy and and the and its shortcomings is one of the reasons why rcb royal uh, challengers bangalore has not won a won a ipl trophy as well the team on paper was one of the best teams out there stars great players in great form but no they couldn't they couldn't win that trophy so mm. there there are in i mean like i mean let's just be very clear that no no skipper is perfect so there have been weaknesses in virat kohli but those weaknesses were completely overlooked because of his star power and i am just glad that the bcci and the current management of the team have are uh, in a way uh, very keen to uh, keep this yeah. aside and move on and build something else so when when the decision was announced lot of people have come out just like uh, and they are talking a lot of good things about virat kohli which is which is very good when we analyze is stint as captain of course it's, it's not been fully bad that way there have been very very good victories as well and uh, but at the same time someone like ashwin tweeting it out saying that uh, it would be a headache for the next skipper to emulate or take it forward what virat kohli has been uh, has done for the team uh, it's it's also i mean of course ashwin has his reasons to say that but let's also not forget that ashwin was sidelined by virat kohli despite being one of the best bowlers the country had best spin bowling option 
especially in test matches because he was also he is also a test century and he was mm. he was ignored for the longest time so so that makes us question virat kohli's idea of team building in itself let's let's not i mean for the present let's not even discuss what 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 kind of a team building he did for the future as well that's that's that we can uh, evidently see in the coming months when ravid ravid will be doing the tinkering now with with i guess rohit sharma who, who is likely to take over as as the test keeper as well i mean likely to i'm not very sure whether that kind of a single captain thing would uh, bcci mm-hmm. would want that uh and so yeah so looking at future i don't think uh now the focus would purely be in the idea of aggression in the idea of uh, team philosophy as such i think some basic things have to be ironed out also as far as uh, team composition is concerned and mm. as far as rebuilding because again it's a cast generation now a lot of players would retire soon including rohit sharma himself virat kohli again mid 30 so he has to also uh, over the next few years he will start waning if not completely out so uh, that process is there so that this uh, and aggression won't fuel that process it needs a systematic yeah. approach and it needs approach that will uh, that require the board and the management to draw its resources from the rng circuit and not just ipl okay so by either way from my point of view and with a very limited stake in 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 the game as far as cricket is concerned but at least from that point of view the exciting times to look forward to in terms of change and newness uh, good the good thing about chatting to you les is that uh, there is complete clarity when a question is asked there is no dithering no equivocation <laughs> at least you seem to have your thoughts clear and for for me uh, just from from that the little learning is that uh, perhaps exciting times ahead for indian cricket as this rebuilding process uh, takes shape and some of these new uh, some newness some change to to look forward to i think we'll uh, keep a track on what happens with india cricket of course uh, as uh, play things continues moving on to a young uh, badminton player lakshya sen who has uh, on sunday won the india open uh, badminton beating the world champion in the process 20 year old lakshya sen uh, let's see happening in new delhi again at the time of the pandemic but i guess badminton they are probably a little bit uh, safer in terms of contact and all of those things uh, what do you make of this win uh, at the start of a new season in a sport that has become quite popular and uh, in a sense important also for india so uh, i mean it's it's easy to say that this is the year that indian badminton the men's game will come come of age because uh, uh, lakshya sen beat the world champion who was crowned last month and he had beaten kidambi shrikanth in the final of the world championship last month uh, loki new the singaporean player but he is also a young player he's just 20 the same age as lakshya so he has just stormed into the uh, global badminton scene towards the end of last year the same thing with lakshya sen as well uh, their their trajectory and their uh, uh, growth i mean the climb into the upper upper uh, excellence of the sport that way because lakshya won bronze at the same world championship last month so he is he is in the thick of action now but mm. it it also coincided with the with the with the tapering off season because in a year when the olympics are is staged the second half of that year is not exactly something that all the top players would be very because they would be recuperating they would be replanning they would be getting into the next olympic cycle and they would be planning all these things of course they will come and play and it's not like they would be completely off the gas but mm. Uh, but the priorities are a little different the priorities become suddenly long term having said that lakshya sen's uh, priority right now is is to just keep pushing and just keep winning whatever the tournament wherever that happens and that he is doing perfectly uh, in that sense in the last year he missed out uh, qualifying for the olympics and that's not uh, because of his fault because he was he had a couple of injury issues then he tested when he was starting to compete uh, early last year he tested positive for 
covid yeah to come back i mean he tested positive at a tournament venue so mm. uh, and then subsequently another injury he suffered and then he just got it back after the olympics he started competing again and he made it uh, uh, he made it to finals a couple of times and he made it to the a bronze player of at the uh, he won a bronze medal at the world championship so it has been a remarkable journey in the second half of last year for him and a journey that is uh, well planned out uh, in the sense he is a, a thorough system product he has he was assimilated into the badminton system but not the gopichan system which has brought out so many champions in the past few years but he is from the padukone academy the two major schools of two major if i can call it garanas of indian badminton so he is based in bangalore uh, his training base uh, is in bangalore and he joined the padukone academy when he was 12 so he has had a long stint there under under the guidance of padukone as well as vimal kumar who is the coach and so uh, and ogq is involved in it uh, there is also the ministry the sai involved in ensuring that he is getting the systematic exposure that is needed for him to grow and become become a player of stature and uh beyond that in the past 6 months he has had certain major tweaks in his game he has had influences from various uh, foreign coaches is uh, the next the uh, is going to get a korean coach would be working with him as a personal coach and Uh, apparently the ministry is mulling to give him an entourage including a personal uh, physio uh, to work with him and uh, also last year a cup he has had chance to train with uh, victor axels and the olympic champion as well so again okay, his game in the uh, last 6 uh, months has transformed in the sense that there is a certain level of maturity that has come in uh, uh, as far as uh, tactics are concerned in the game so he was himself a very aggressive player you he, he liked to finish matches fast he was always on the front foot he wanted to keep it flat and fast use some of the power and the youthful speed that he had that he has but against against the world champion who also plays a similar brand of game he is he is hyper aggressive he is uh, he, he he goes flat out to kill the game uh probably the lesson learned was from kidambi himself when he made in the world championship final but uh, this time lakshya was ready for it and uh, the tactical change was simple he, he was patient mm. and developing that kind of a patience at 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 this stage of his career when he is just moving out of the uh, junior ranks and trying to make a mark in the senior ranks uh, it, it just uh, i mean presents itself i mean it, it it is promising for his for a for a bright road ahead just that he has to keep evolving and also i i always take these kind of victories with a pinch of salt because it's the start of the season uh it's also a point where not and the entire world of badminton is not exactly in that peak trajectory they are just building <clears throat> towards building up whatever they want to achieve in this year and also whatever they have they want to achieve in the next 3 years culminating at the paris olympics so that is a kind of plan that should be in place for lakshya and knowing how uh, padukon works as well as how his trajectory has been from from the age of 12 when he has been training under under padukon i believe that this this part would be taken care of as far as lakshya is concerned talent wise there's no there's no doubt that he is he is one of the best right now in the indian indian mix of of talented players that we have and it's also great to see a young uh, player winning medals on the globe uh, on the global front yeah. and uh, exuding promise this we have only seen with the women's players uh, badminton players in the country it's always great to see the men also join the bandwagon absolutely and in a year when we have both the commonwealth and the asian games to at least in theory look forward to uh, it'll be good to see men's badminton also making some kind of impact and i'm sure that he'll be uh, up there we'll keep track on that also but finally our last bit of the day and perhaps most exciting news of the day is that this week begins the afc women's asian cup 
Uh, it's happening in India. India are hosting the tournament for the first time since 1979 and participating in the tournament for the first time since 2003. Uh, 12 countries are playing the tournament, of which 8 will proceed from the league stage to the knockout stage of the competition. And 5 teams, uh, including of course the hosts Australia who have already qualified for the next uh, FIFA Women's World Cup, 5 teams will get to qualify uh, for that uh, global quadrennial uh, tournament. Japan, of course, are uh, the, the favourite, some would say Japan, Australia, uh, China have been the most successful historically at this tournament, but I think over the last three or four editions, it's Australia and Japan that have really uh, dominated, along with a strong Korean side that have made it to the finals as many as four times without ever having won the competition. Uh, Leslie, super excited now that most of Indian football is uh, also on uh, on a bit of a break following COVID-19, unfortunately. Uh, but this is happening in a super tight bubble. I received... Uh, uh, a press release just this morning, I haven't had a chance to go through it yet. But talking about the Maharashtra government's role also in ensuring that the AFC uh, bubble for, for uh, these 12 teams is maintained as strictly and as uh, sort of diligently as possible to make sure no one uh, gets sick and we get a chance to see some top quality uh, football over the next couple of weeks. That was the biggest worry. In fact, last week, uh, in, the, in our last episode, we had spoken about that as well. So, uh, now with the uh, ISL also having uh, uh, getting uh, I mean, getting affected by COVID-19, uh, uh, when I when I uh, saw that news, I was just worried about the AFC, AFC Cup. Because there is a lot of things at stake here beyond just the staging of a continental tournament or, or, or these countries coming in and playing for, for the cup. It, what is at stake is, is, is for Indian football itself. So uh, not as host, but as uh, for, the, for the future of the game, for the women's game is concerned. Because uh, we don't have such a setup for, for women in this country. And mm. the, them playing a continental stage, and it's very evident the, evident the long gap, 2003, after 2003, they are making it into the tournament has posts. So, uh, and imagine that if back in 1979, I believe that we were finalists uh, in mm -hmm. the inaugural Asian Cup. So, uh, in that regard, probably we can call India as, an, as a footballing nation, as one of the pioneers of women's football in Asia. But then we fall, fe fell a long way behind because, because of uh, one simple reason. Apathy. It's it's uh, there has no not been a keen interest by the national federation to push the women's game into the for, forefront or give them give them if not if not equal opportunity a level chance. If you I mean I mean a sem some semblance of a level chance for them. So the fact that uh, the national uh, league, which is actually a tournament, it's not a league. Uh, it's not been staged since 2019 when we have had ISLs and uh, I leagues being staged, I league qualifiers being staged, uh, Santos Trophy and uh, being staged. So, uh, oh, and so forth. Yeah. yeah. So, national championship happened last year, uh, the mm. women's national championship in Kerala. But we have been, and this is something that we may work out, work, work on a story, uh, just giving it out a little in advance that. There are uh, informations that we have obtained which point at that national championship be, uh, to be very shortly organized. A lot of issues were there, in fact. And so, so that, that is, in fact, a, a, a clear portrayal of how, how the game is run in the country. And so for this woman who hardly get anything to play or play for, and they're getting a chance to showcase their talent and their skill and their abilities uh, on the continental stage. And, uh, and fingers crossed, we are very I mean, hopeful that they would make a good showing. They would um, make it to the knockouts. It's a tough group for them, uh, which you can uh, possibly elaborate what are the dynamics in that group. Uh, and uh, I believe when we discuss this, uh, there is a chance that they can I mean, if if not the big top two teams, they can probably progress as one of the third best qualifiers from the group stages. 
So, uh, a further complication in this story is the fact that Australia, by virtue of being host for the next World Cup, have already qualified. So, that also kind of changes the, the World Cup qualification dynamic a bit. But, uh, but yeah, so just uh, since you were asking about group dynamics, India have in the same group China, who are extremely strong. Uh, they also have Chinese Taipei, old rivals, because you were mentioning the 1979 tournament. Yeah. Chinese Taipei beat India in the final of that uh, inaugural tournament. So, otherwise there would have been uh, an Asian Cup uh, somewhere in the trophy cabinet at AIFF house. Uh, but, uh, and of course then there are debutants, the, the only debutants of, of the tournament which is uh, Iran. Uh, the good thing I think from an India perspective is uh, one that on the opening day of the tournament which is the 20th of January, uh, India will play Iran and I think that is uh, a great way because uh, no no disrespect to Iran of course but they are a young team, they are a new program uh, playing in this tournament at this level for the first time. So at least theoretically our ch best chances of a solid result and starting the tournament strong is against uh, Iran which in a football context I, I mean you don't normally, you wouldn't normally hear us uh, as Indians uh, saying that. So, th so that should be fun and if they can start well in that opening game, then I think anything is possible because what we've seen of this team and they've been training and, and working under extremely challenging uh, conditions like you rightly mentioned, Leslie, no competitions uh, really at club level or any other level. Uh, so fortunately, they over the last few months, they've gotten a chance to travel around uh, a little bit and play some exhibition games. They played in a four-nation tournament in South America where they, they played the likes of Venezuela and Chile and Brazil, of course. Uh, showing some very, very spirited performances and some great potential. Uh, they are physically very, very well drilled at this point. Uh, so, beyond how India does at the tournament, I think it's exciting for us uh, as fans to get a chance to be watching the best in the continent uh, play day in, day out in our time zone. So, uh, very few other distractions. So, it will be, uh, I think, for many Indian fans, the first opportunity to see a Japan or a China or a Korea or an Australia uh, play at, at this level. And I think as exciting as it is to see uh, India's women at that stage, it's equally exciting to see some of these guys who are also World Cup winners and, and, and among the best in the world at the sport that they do, uh, coming and playing in India and performing uh, and do, doing, doing the uh, stuff here. So pretty excited about that. You can of course catch, uh, for those who are interested in, in football, catch our extensive coverage. We've got ex-India captain Renly Singh who will be coming in for some of the tactical analysis of, of the games as they go on. We have a uh, veteran sports journalist Sharda Ugra, uh, Vaibhav Raghunandan, my colleague, will hopefully be at some point uh, able to attend some of those games on the ground if things uh, COVID-19 permits, etc. So we're, we're planning regular coverage of that so you can join us on 420 grams for all of the coverage of the AFC uh, Asian Cup, which actually uh, begins today where, with a big preview show. Uh, we'll have all the details on all the teams and, and the biggest, I guess, highlights of things to look forward to and much more. Uh, so, and with that, I think we'll call it also a wrap on this edition of Playthings from Leslie, myself and the entire NewsClick team. I hope you're keeping safe. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back again next week with hopefully lots more to talk about. Until then, goodbye.